Hey guys, um, I've recently gotten quite a few uh, private messages uh, concerning the, the hand drill and in particular uh, the floating hands technique. Um, I'll be honest with you, uh, yeah, I will explain the best way I know how to tell you to possibly learn how to do it, but uh, I actually kind of want to talk about that for a minute, you know, floating hands versus, say, traditional passes that you see where people go down the spindle. Um, first off, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that floating hands is not really necessary to know. I mean, it's good to know, and it's, uh, it's kind of enjoyable for me. It's sort of like a, a meditation in movement or motion for me, or meditating while I'm doing movement, you know. Uh, very similar, I guess you could say, to Asian philosophy of uh, doing like Tai Chi or something. Um, that said, uh, traditional passes where you're traveling down the spindle, in my honest opinion, they have advantages and they're superior somewhat to doing floating hands. Um, give me a moment to explain. Um, when you're doing uh, the floating hands, you're kind of limited with the amount of downward pressure that you can deliver um, while you're performing that. As with traditional passes, you're able to, you know, basically place a lot more downward pressure on your material, in particular down here at your spindle. You're going to drill into your board with a lot more force. In that, way, in that regard, it's got a lot more, uh, as far as uh, advantage, over floating hands. I'm sorry if I'm not making too much sense. That's just, oh my gosh, I've been up for days. but. Floating hands is good to know, but it's, like I said, limited. Once you get the pressure that you've got, you're pretty much, that's all you get. Uh, with time, given time, you can develop quite a bit of, uh, I guess you could say, um, power or force or ability to deliver force downward as you're doing uh, floating hands, but it still won't come close to doing traditional passes. Um, that said, I've had quite a few uh, requests um, to demonstrate or to at least try to show people how to make it easier to learn. And the first thing I would suggest is, you know, obviously you've probably been practicing with the hand drill somewhat, um, is to not focus on the, the spindle anymore. I have a, a kind of a simple <laughs> exercise or technique here I'd like to share with you. I was watching the movie Sling Blade and in the film there is a guy who has been institutionalized because he we killed a few people. <laughs> uh, his name is Carl. And Carl, <laughs> I believe he's um, I believe he's mentally handicapped, uh, if I recall. I'm, like I said, I'm tired and I'm forgetting movies and everything. But um, Carl does this thing with his hands where he's like, you know, things like that. And I noticed that when he was rubbing his hands, um, I was like, oh, wow. But kind of puts me in mind of doing floating hands a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I think would be kind of a neat little thing to do. Don't focus on having a spindle. I don't really have anything. I'll, I will close this video out in a minute here and go get a spindle just to, to show the, the floating hand technique. But I want to show you this movement that I came up with. Watch my hands right here. Right now they're lined up perfectly. As you can see, here and here. The movement is like this. People are like, okay, well, I can do that. Well, that's good. Now, the way I think you should probably try to learn how to do it is think of snaking your thumb underneath and coming up from below and then coming up like this. You're alternating your thumbs. You see that? I can grab my hands. Going down, snaking my thumb. I can squeeze my hands. Let's watch that from all angles. Look at this movement. Look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. Right there. Get that down. And then, you know, when you can do it, try to pick up the pace just a little bit. If you're trying to use speed when doing floating hands, it's not going to do that way. You're not going to do very well. Your spindle is probably going to go flying and pop out of your, um, your hearth as you're doing floating hands, as you're trying to get an ember. Let's focus on this movement before we even grab the spindle. Look at that. 
is basically doing this. Your thumb's going to snake up, under, and then come up. Your hands are going to bypass. Because when you're doing floating, the movement is like this. You're doing this and this. Your hand is going to come down. The one that's going forward is going to go down. And the one that's in the back is kind of like coming from an upward position back and down. And then the motion reverses. Look at that. I'll do it real slow. Real slow. Look at that. What's occurring here is that that midpoint right about here is a pivot. That pivot allows your hands to remain in place. Now here's my little exercise, the snake, the snaky thumb. Let's call it the snaky thumb. We'll just give it a nickname. <laughs> snake, the snake and the clasp, the snake and the clasp. There you go, just like that. Get this movement down before you focus on the spindle. I see a lot of people, or have seen videos in the past, I'm not going to say a lot of people, and I'm not trying to be controversial or cause any kind of trouble with anyone. I, I, I'm not doing that. I'm just telling you what works for me. They suggest to do this rocking, where it's just like this motion like this. I don't really agree with that. I think that people are trying to do this motion, where it's like this passing back and forwards, and the pivot just isn't as strong like that. The pivot is strong when the hands are alternating motions. Just like that. Just like that. There's my snaky thumb and clasp technique that I nicknamed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm slap happy from being tired, but uh, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much it. Learn that technique. I will demonstrate the the floating hands on a spindle here in a moment. I'll have to try to find something. Like I said, I've pretty much cleaned out the place. I've got a few things hanging up on the wall like here behind me and up on the counter, but give me a moment and I'll be back, okay? Hey guys, back. I found a, an old set, believe it or not, in a closet back here that <laughs> I still need to get some things out of. I have got a ton of things because I've actually got stuff in storage from where I lived in a fairly large home uh, north of here some time ago, so <laughs> I've gotten into a mess with this move, but that's okay. I'll have it done at least by the middle of next week. But anyway, um, back to what I was saying, that snaky thumb and clasp, you'll want to focus on getting this movement down first. Like this. I've heard people talk about doing the itsy bitsy spider thing, and I think it's just too exaggerated of a movement to help people learn the floating hand. This, when you're doing your hands first, might be a benefit, like this. And then that way, you know, when you can pick up the pace somewhat, you can see that it's the same movement. You've got a better pivot like that. Um, I'll pan down here and we'll look at this. Okay. I hope you guys can see me. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to try to do that Stinky thumb and clasp technique, if you want to call it that. So, there's my thumbs. I'm snaking, and you see, it's causing the hands to remain in that same position. Now, you don't need that, and you don't need this exaggerated position. When you get good at floating, you can just point your hands in a downward position, and they'll kind of stay in that motion, as long as you're doing a little bit of that forward and down, and, you know, down and back movement. They're just going to alternate. I'll do it forward to you too, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Let's do snake. There's my snake. There's my snake in class. There's my snake in class. And then I get to where I can do this. Deliver force with it. Like I said in the past, you're not going to be able to get as much downward force as you would with traditional passes. Um, if you'll refer to a video I did last summer, I believe it was, could be wrong, it may have been last spring, I think it was last summer, I did a video where I used uh, sandals that you wear on your feet to give you, I guess, more contact area with your hands and also to keep them turning your hands up. I called it the sandal drill or 
believe is the name of that video, which is rather humorous, but still nonetheless a good technique because you keep carrying your hands up if you actually really had to do this. Give me one second, I have someone at the door. Sorry about that, it's uh, someone who I had actually uh, sold a few things to, they were coming to pick it up, so I had to cut momentarily. But I believe what I was talking about was uh, the video I did over what I refer to as the sandal drill. Um, you'll notice, and the reason I'm bringing this up, I'm getting to a point, trust me, like I said, I'm tired, I hope I'm making sense. Um, the reason I bring it up, if you'll notice in the video, I exaggerate, I have the camera panned up at one point, and I exaggerate this motion where I'm showing you, I have the sandals on, that you need to keep your index finger and your thumb free, even though the sandal will be here, that way you can grasp the spindle and keep it in place while you're transitioning your hands from the bottom to the top. If you'll notice, it took quite a while for me to do that. And then I took the time to angle the camera back down after I had done a few passes. Uh, the reason I bring this up, if you'll notice, that was quite a bit of time lost. A lot of people are concerned, overly I believe, with the spindle being stationary for too long. And I think that's why they want to learn the floating technique a lot. They think that if they keep it in constant motion, that their chances of getting an ember is greater, I guess. Or, you know, that they build up more heat and they, they sustain that heat over a period of time. There's many reasons why, or they want to look cool. Which, if you want to look cool, by all means, learn floating. But you know what? My honest opinion being cool is getting an ember. That's just my two cents. I'm not trying to be a butthole. I'm just trying to tell it straight, you know. Um, you'll notice, though, in that video that I travel down the spindle with those sandals on my hands. And I take the time to show that you need to keep your, your thumb and forefinger clear of the sandal. That way you can grasp it. You put your hand back up here and go back down. I actually take the time to pan the camera back down and still taking too much time between passes, I'm able to get an ember easily. You know, obviously I'm able to supply a lot more downward force with the sandals on my hands, or at least I've got more contact, I believe, like this, with the sandals on my hand going down. It's my honest opinion that obviously, and you know a lot of people would agree with this, that uh, um, traditional passes do have, you know, an advantage over floating simply for the fact that you can deliver a lot more force. It's not necessary to learn floating. If you want to, I hope that that technique, uh, the snaky thumb and clasp, kind of helps with that. Because a lot of people have a hard time getting that technique down. But that said, I'd like to uh, you know close this video out with uh, um, just saying that I think that both of them are good techniques. Uh, but traditional passes do kind of have an advantage over floating. Floating is not necessary, you know. Um, I may do this one more time just to show you, just before I close, just so I've explained it. Well, this is what I've come up with. The snake thumb and the clasp. Remember, I'm doing it. I'm going to do it without it. My hands are here. I'm going to let them do this. Snake. My thumb snakes up under this thumb, and then my hand comes up, and then I reverse that motion. Look at that. Clasp, snaky thumb, clasp, snaky thumb, clasp, and then you can pick up that. You can do it fast if you want to grab your hands. You don't need to, but I'm going to try to mimic that motion again with a spindle in my hand. Okay, there's the thumb and clasp. You can see I've got a spindle in here. See? And there's the clasp, there's the clasp, there's the clasp, there's the clasp, there's the clasp. And then you can just transition to this without the class. Without the class, this is basically what it looks like. It's not necessary to do that. You can do this with varied positions. I suppose I can do it on the edge of my hands. I've actually gotten a member like this before. You know, you're unlikely to get an ember doing that with fresh materials outdoors. Trust me. This is just acting silly here. But, that said, I would like to close this video now and uh, hopefully I've helped. If I didn't explain it well, I'm sorry, it's because I'm tired. But, um, and I've been up for many days. I've got a lot of things going on. I'm having to do things at the new place in conjunction with trying to move, trying to run errands, 
and everything else. So hopefully I've helped any at all. But you guys have a good day, and uh, hopefully this video helps somebody. I'll let it load. I, I've got to get back to work. I've got to get to doing things. But I have some videos. I wanted to say this before I got off here. Plan for when I do get moved in, if I've got the internet I mean, It may take me a month or two to get to making videos again, but... I'm going to do a series of videos just specifically focusing on the hand drill for people and uh, show you some things that I've kind of been keeping quiet and secret that might help you uh, get further along with the hand drill. Uh, that and the fire roll as well. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close for now and you guys have a good evening. Bye.